Hello, in this C programming video, I am going to show you how to return an array from a function. So this is, you know, the end of the array section of this tutorial series for C. So if you don't know what an array is, I recommend that you go and watch the previous videos to help explain what they are and then come back here. So if we create a function, let's say int, and I'm going to call it get array. And do, 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 do. let's say if I create a variable here called p equals, and I'm going to set it to what get array returns. And if I print out this value, I know right now get array does not return anything, but it will momentarily. And we'll print out the value of p backslash n new line character so it's just formatting nicely. And his output and we'll literally just say int now we won't even say int we'll just say return in, now actually we'll have a variable so let's say int i equal five return i now that we have returned i if we run it we get the value five as you would expect and also, if you don't understand what a function is, also known as a method or a subroutine, then feel free to go and check out that part of the tutorial series as well. Okay, so what if I replace this with an array? I'm going to call it array. It's going to have two elements. This principle applies if it's, you know, two elements, ten elements, multidimensional, doesn't matter. And what we're going to say, I'm going to assign just a couple of values to it initially for and I'll assign the value of six to it. And now if I try and return array, I'll leave that as is and see what happens. So we get error. So let's see what the error is saying. Warning returning int asterisk from a function with return type int makes integer from pointer without a cast. So doesn't really mean much. So this is basically a integer pointer. When you see asterisks in C, in C++, it means pointer. The next section in this tutorial series for C is going to be covering pointers, but I'll give you a brief overview of what pointers are. So a pointer is basically a variable that stores a memory address to another variable. So it's, it's a way of, you know, not linking, but referring to the same data that some other variable you know refers to like i said in the pointer section of this video i will go into it in more depth so you can understand it but for now understand if you try and return uh, an array is basically so in this case an integer array is just a integer pointer to an area in memory where they ha basically have two integers in the because because i've got two integers this 10 will be 10 integers back to back and that's it you know that's the way it works and he just says okay we use this you know amount of space so the first one's here the next one's after let's say you know eight kilobytes one byte you know you know you know eight bytes one kilobyte whatever the space that's used by an integer in this compiler in this you know computer is and the next one will be eight you know, bytes or one kilobyte after that for example or whatever the amount of space used is so what you have to do, you have to return a pointer. You put asterisks like so. If you run that, what do we get now? So it's still not working. So when you are returning a pointer, you can't assign it just to the value p. This also needs to be a pointer now. And again, if we run this, this still will not work. And the reason being, there's two main reasons right now. So when you are returning, a value like this like an array because generally speaking you shouldn't be returning a pointer to a local array or a local variable i should say and the reason is because at the end once you know this is hit the return statement this anything that was created inside of here which this array was ceases to exist anymore in memory there is a keyword called static that we can use to make sure it, you know, it persists. And you put the word static in front of it like so. You can put this in front of an object, in front of an array, or a simple variable like an, an integer or a character, 
you know, variable. So it doesn't have to be an array. What static means is it creates, you know, this variable, or in this case, an array in memory. Once this function, you know, has finished running, that area of memory does not get, re you know, deleted, you know, until the application shuts down. It's, it remains. So as do these values, so we can access them outside. And if the function gets called again, if there was some sort of mathematical process or some sort of data retrieval, the same values will still be there. Now, if we run it, we are missing one thing, but we run it. And okay, so that's what we're getting. We're basically getting the memory address right now. And the reason is we haven't, you know, we need to deliminate the pointer. And to do that, we put an asterisk. And we need to, if we run this now, let's see what we get. So we get the value four, which is great. That's the first one. How do we get the second one? Can we do something like this? As you can see, that does not work. Uh, work. Yeah, let me put this down. The way you want to get, you know, a specific value, instead of point zero for the first one, one for the second one, you put open parenthesis, close parenthesis here. And let me format it another way. I like my code to be formatted. You all know how I like it done. And what we're going to do, you just put plus zero and you just see this as the index number. So this is the zeroth element, which is the, you know, the first one. And if I save that, we'll get the same value of hmm, Okay, let's have a look at what is going on. Hmm. Okay, let me clear the output. Let me save it, run it again. And we get the value four. So I'm just gonna say that was some BS output stuff. And if I put the value one now here, or the number one, Drum roll, please. You get the value six, so you get the next one. So that's how you return arrays from functions. I would recommend that you don't do it unless you really have to, and then, like, if you really need to, a better way would be to probably pass in an array into the function, because remember, when you pass in an array to the function, it's a pointer that references the original array unless you do some sort of constant with it. And as a result, any value that you change will affect the original array. Maybe you got one array, you don't want that to be affected, but you want it to return one. You will create a new array that has all the data of the first array and then pass that in and then do whatever calculation that you need to. But generally speaking, don't like, if you can get around, get away from doing statics, um, returning arrays, especially when your application isn't that complex. When it's more complex, you might really need to quickly do it just to get things working, but otherwise stay away from it. But I think it's important to showcase it so you, you are aware and you know how to do it and you understand. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the Discord group, link in the description or post in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified of more C programming videos. I'm gonna get back to the regular, I'm going to get back to the regular swing of things of uploading more content, especially programming content, as something that's been lacking on this channel of late. I will be soon starting a modern JavaScript tutorial series, which will be the most, and I guarantee you, be the most comprehensive guide and reference playlist for learning new JavaScript. It won't just be ES6 or ES2017, you know, it'll be ES5 all the way to the latest version. So you'll get every single feature and it will be covered in there. And there's some more exciting stuff coming out within Sonar systems as well. Stay tuned and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.